Welcome back to the mining channel. On today's video, we're gonna hammer out a sluice box for the Trommel build. If you're new here and haven't watched my videos before, make sure you check out my channel and watch the videos on how this thing was built. We'll build these sluice boxes out of brand new steel so they're perfectly straight. So let's get at it. Let's start off with this section. I'll be doing a small flare from two feet wide to three feet wide. So to start off with, I wanna make this area really rigid. So I cut out some inch and a half piping. We'll weld this guy on all the way around. With the perimeter structure all welded up on that, went ahead and made this sluice box. I also welded a perimeter around this so it stiffens this up. The only thing that we have to do now is take that one inch solid stock, burst a hole on this and weld that up. Now what the center pivot does is allow us to level off of our sluice boxes side to side. And we could also raise and lower the sluice box. Before I start going and put the rest of the one and a half inch here, I just need to add my nugget trap. This nugget trap is also gonna act as a brace to go from this point to that point. For the nugget trap, we'll be using a four inch pipe. I'll cut this right down the center and only use half of it right now. I've got the crossbar tacked onto the sluice. Now I've got these pieces made up, so this will actually bolt to the frame of the trommel. Now we'll cap off the ends of the nugget sluice. For this side, I cut out a hole. We'll weld this MPT bung on there, cap it off later on, so we'll be able to clean out the nugget side on this side. The next thing I want to do for the box is add some stiffeners to the side. So we'll just use some one and a half inch by one and a half inch, clamp it on and get it tacked into place. The main sluice box will be three feet wide by eight feet long. I have six inch sides marked out already in a chalk line. So now I'll show you guys how to do a poor man's break, I call it. There we go. That's pretty neat, eh? You can see it's got a nice tight gap there still, so we'll be able to go along and weld that up. You know, a person could go and cut that six inches off bring it up, have someone else hold it there for you as you go along and tack it, and sometimes it's not perfect. So this way is super easy, it takes a couple seconds, and everything is perfectly straight. This inch and a half stock will stay on here. We'll weld this up later on. This extra four inches here, we're keeping on. I'll show you later on in the video. Now what I wanna do is cut some six inch tall pieces out of sheet metal, and we're gonna run it straight down the center. I've got the sluice box flipped over and also got the twist out of it. I had to shim that one corner just because I'm not on level ground. So now we'll be able to go in, start making our bottom supports, and that'll stiffen the sluice box right up so it doesn't twist. Okay, this sluice box is just tacked together. Let's wiggle it over and mock it up to the trommel. Before we go welding these two sluice boxes together, I just need to weld these perches up top for the come-alongs. And then we also need two hangers, two thirds of the way down the sluice box. All right, check that out. The sluice box is all hung. This hinge will be sealed up with an automotive urethane. This stuff is super durable to any abrasion and it's really flexible. So when I fold the sluice box up, the stuff will not break. My first or second trommel, I can't remember, had a hung sluice box like this. There are drawbacks to it. For one, you can't have the sluice box super long because that's a lot of weight on those come alongs. The second drawback is having those cables there. They can be a pain in the ass when you're trying to clean out the sluice box. A couple benefits to having the sluice boxes hung like this is for transportation, you just simply fold it up and then strap it in 
with those eyelets. Another benefit is not having to deal with jacks. You don't have to level the ground for your Seuss box to sit on. My big wash plant does have trailer jacks for adjustment. It works super well, but I'm just going like this just to show you guys something different. The main plus side to having these hung is once they're folded out on site, you can drag this trommel anywhere with those sluice boxes hanging just like that. You don't even almost have to adjust them afterwards. At the very end of the sluice box, I'm gonna add another half piece of pipe here. I'll use this so when I spray out the sluice box, it goes into this trough and then I'll have an output on the side. I'll also add a one and a half inch MPT so we can cap it off while we're sluicing. To prevent a rooster tail of the water coming over the matting, hitting this and kicking upwards, I just cut out a small plate. We can cap this off during our run. The miner's moss will actually overlay it there. I'll just add one fastener at this point. So we're heading back to the top of the sluice. There's a couple things I wanna add. This is to regulate the water and the material that goes from the trommel into the sluice box. What I'll do here is weld these tabs to the frame of the sluice box, and this will actually end up being adjustable. So what this piece does, it acts as a gate like in a hydro dam. As the water material come through, this will actually regulate the amount of water and the material that fans out. Typically, once you're out at the mine site and adjust these, they usually don't have to be adjusted again. Another thing that these gates do is actually prevent any pulsing in the sluice box. So as you feed material in, you'll get a rush of water and material. As it flows through, it'll actually fill that up and then everything will come out at an even rate. And then the other thing that I wanna add is these diverters. So this tab will get welded onto the sluice box and I'll be able to adjust the flow to go left side or right side. Freddy Dodge actually does this quite a bit different. He actually ends up making a V trough. So all that material gets brought into one area and then he has two drop boxes out to distribute it into each side of the sluice box. I'm not doing it that way on this trommel just because it does end up dropping this part of the sluice box down another foot or two. With these diverters, you can adjust them straight up and down. The reason why I have this gap in here is because if you have it right down to the bottom, a little bit of material will build up this way water will flow under it and also push that material. With the top of the box all tacked together and these two welding it up, let's talk about what we're gonna use to catch our gold. There's so many different options out there from Hungarian riffles, expanded over moss, even hydraulic riffles. Can we take a break now? No, you can't have a break. You just literally started. You're a horrible boss. So what are we gonna use after the nugget trap? We're actually gonna be using gold hog matting. The amount of concentrates that come out of them are very minimal and it make cleanups very quick. I've had my mats for about six or seven years. They've been in the sun and they show zero sign of fading. Also, the abrasion that comes from the sluice box, zero wear at all. So let me show you what mats we're gonna use. Scrubber, excellent mat to run at the top of the sluice box. Has tall riffles and catches everything from nuggets to small gold. Razorback. The riffles are slightly shorter than the scrubber mat, catches medium sized gold down to fine gold. Downdraft. This is a new mat to me. I haven't tried it out just yet, so we'll see how it works. The riffle height is fairly short and it should be able to catch smaller gold and fine gold. Then finally, mother load. I run this mat at the very bottom of my sluice box in the big trommel. These mats have very small riffles and can catch extremely fine gold. Out of the trauma, it goes into the distribution box. I whipped up one of these dampeners. They work really well. From there, it goes into the nugget trap. This is a hydraulic riffle system that I whipped up. These work really well. I have them on my big trauma also. To clean out the nugget trap, you just pull this out. Set it off to the side. There's two hoses that run from the trommel down to the spray bar system. From there, it starts into the gold hog matting. There's four individual pieces here to pull out and clean out. These are just wing nuts with a small clamp system right there. These bolts are actually welded from the underside so you don't have to deal with them falling out during cleanup. Down at the bottom, we have another dampener. We'll see how this sluice box performs, but sometimes I don't run a bottom one just because it does back up material. And then finally, our safe catch, a four pound expanded over miner's moss. These just have a wedge, hammer in, 
So finally our bottom catch, after we clean out in the entire box, sometime gold makes it underneath the matting and you can wash it out into this and then into a bucket. So there's only one thing left to do. Let's paint this thing. So for us to paint the trommel, we'll be using a semi-gloss speed enamel today. It is quite cold out, but we still should be fine. So we'll do this the quick way for you guys and we'll just pour this on. We've got our cup of paint here. Yeah, there we go. Looks pretty good, eh? So a couple years ago, my colors used to be black and red. Make On Industries has that, so I ended up changing it to black and orange. My wife doesn't really like it because it reminds her of Halloween, but I like it. So. Next step, let's paint the barrel and the engine compartment. So we'll use a safety orange. And we'll just brush this on. So it's laying on thick. So that looks pretty sharp, eh? Let me show you a close up. And of course, my dog has to match my trommel. So painting this trommel just makes it that much better. Sure, they do get beat up in the field and covered in dirt, but for the time being, it'll look nice. Every couple of years, I do like to give it a fresh coat of paint. There are a couple odds and ends left to do, like guarding for the rollers and the chain drive. I'll do that in a couple weeks time. Just remember, there's a thousand ways to build a sluice box. Use your judgment and research on what you think is best and you can fine tune it once you're out in the gold fields. Well, the trommel build is completely done. In a month's time, we'll have this thing rolling and have some gold in the box. As for a total on building this sluice box, I'm into it for about $2,000 and that's including painting the entire trommel. That ends up being 141 hours and $7,020 we have into this entire unit. So that's pretty good for just a scrapyard build. Oh, and one last thing, the winner of that gold from the previous episode, his name is Art. I'm assuming you're down from the States considering that your comment had something to do with the desert. So I'll message you and I'll get that gold sent off as soon as possible. For all the other people that commented, thank you. I really like to interact with my viewers and don't worry, I will have a lot of extra giveaways this summer. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you on the next one.